welcome to shruti out loud hello hello hi shruti hi vinayak how are you all well how are you doing all good all good so you had a good day how did you you know really end the week and how are you gliding into the weekend what are the plans <laughs> I think uh, given the current state of things there is no difference between a week or a weekend or a day that's so, true that's all so the same because we're all under lockdown so i think the only thing that keeps one going is really the music and the plants that's around me absolutely so is there any way that you sort of you know distinguish between the weekdays or weekends like just to remind yourself is there any change in your activities or uh, it's just you know i i think you know given the fact that one is in the same environment all the time uh-huh. the only time one realizes uh, what day of the week is is one has to you know step out which is very very rare right you know? absolutely otherwise in general yes one gets reminded of you know days only if something major happens like obviously we've lost two great yeah. personalities so the last two days so one will not forget those days absolutely you know? absolutely I yeah this week was i i would say this week was a little you know heavier yeah of course because yeah. i think it's been overall uh, you know i think apart from everything else uh, you know i think people are beginning to realize that you know there is nothing about nature in the end and we all have to live with this for as long as we need to absolutely absolutely i totally agree with you on that and yeah it's like you know the weekdays weekends doesn't really make a difference as of now and i think uh, the lockdown has increased by two more two weeks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was uh, the latest is about an hour back yep 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 so i think you know finally finally a lot of people have started just accepting it that all right you know we don't know how <laughs> <laughs> for how long yeah. this is going to just keep on extending but i think finally most of the people have made peace with it and yeah was, yeah it's it's like a very long summer vacation see normally if you look at may and june of peak summer in india so right. in north india right so at that time in any case schools are off and you know i mean obviously work is not off that right. is the major change i think that for some people work is totally off for some mm. people they have to work from home and i think the toughest it is for the real corona warriors out there the doctors and the essential services health workers you know i think they are actually the forefront of this and they're putting their lives at risk every single day just absolutely, so that absolutely absolutely you know people can be taken care of so. absolutely that that's so true and you know they are just doing it day in and day out without yeah, yeah without any hesitation without thinking about themselves they are just just you know just doing it and i think that's absolutely heart touching and so heartwarming and everybody i believe is so thankful to all these warriors who are actually yeah. you know, just taking it all i, I think this sense. is the coming together of humanity like never before i think you know which happened obviously as a you know by product of this whole pandemic but i think in a good way it has brought people together not just within the community but from all around the world because so you know true. people have realized that at the end of the day all we have is each other so true so true that's everything absolutely everything else yeah. you know does not matter at a time like this absolutely yeah i mean there are obviously you know some um, i would say uh, they, like there are few still some elements who are still trying to you know just create something or the other but yeah, yeah. more or less i would say the whole humanity is as of now just standing up together and fighting this we have never seen anything like this before not just us here yeah. i think our parents even our grandparents for that matter have not pre post independent india right. has not seen a pandemic ever We've right seen right right a couple right. of uh, wars you know, those were not like obviously uh, like nothing close to like a world war or something but right you know it was always only the border states and the defense forces which were affected mainly hmm. but this is something else this is i think uh a real reminder of i think the day like that sting song you know how fragile we are right absolutely and there is nothing that trumps uh, you know human health and human life you know nothing yeah. else can uh, you know sort of supersede that whether it's work whether it's you know absolutely nothing yeah 
you know, travel, of course, yeah. So, so true. Yeah, like, you know, everything has been put on hold as of now in the entire yeah. world. And, yep, people are finding a lot of different ways to, you know, find peace, to find motivation and to find encouragement. And people are just, you know, finding a way. Yeah, I think I think it's, yeah. it's a great time to look inward, not outward, like we always do. I think it's human nature to you know, look at the world around you, look outside, look for happiness from things you know which belong to the outer world. Mm-hmm. I think if one was to look at it in the right way, it is it could also be a time for a great spiritual awakening for most human beings, you know, who right. never otherwise in the day to day life they're so caught up, they are so busy with just, you know, living life as such. Right, human, absolutely. Uh, like, you know, taking, terms, yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. know, living each day on a very serious, like waking up, doing this, doing da 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 going to see the end. Again, waking up the next day, possibly doing the same thing, you know, yeah, just repeating like, uh, everything, you know, it's yeah. It's like a hustle, right? Generally, absolutely, people, yeah. You are working, especially, especially in cities, you know, it's, it's like a chase. Every day is like a chase. You're chasing something. You're chasing your dreams. You're chasing mm. your ambitions. You're chasing the next big target to get something better for yourself or your family. So right. I think, you know, this really breaks it down to the basics. Like, you know, like some okay. wise people have said that if you have a roof over your head and you have air and water mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. food to eat, there's nothing else that a human being really needs. Everything else is, you know, a product of his own personal desires. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I think, yeah, this this is a big realization that a lot of people are actually, I would say, realizing. Like, this is just the basic yeah. needs. This is all you need in the end. So, yeah, and, and, you know, nature yeah. is healing. You know, the biggest thing, you know, I'm sure uh, you're aware that, you know, things which, you know, I would say several thousand crore projects like, you know, cleaning the Yamuna, could not mm. happen in decades has happened over one month of just people stepping back, factories not polluting the water. Right, right, and, right. Know, human beings not causing the mess that they always do on a day-to-day yeah. basis as a byproduct of human waste. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, I think, yeah, things like that, yeah, and, you know, another article said that the oz- one of the biggest uh, perforations in the ozone layer has almost healed in this period, you know, which is great, I think. Hmm. Scientists could not have physically, you know, uh, achieved this any other way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I think, you know, in that sense, if you see for the entire world, Earth uh, as a whole, you know, with especially the big consequences potentially for global warming in the coming few decades, I think this was a welcome uh, relief for Mother Nature and such, as such, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I particularly see that even more, you know, because I work very closely with plants apart from music and I mm. think this is the coolest uh, spring we've had in, and you would also agree, uh, you yeah. also lived in Delhi in the last decade. Right, right, right. You know, I think just sheer lack of vehicles and industries and, you know, smoke from factories and all of that and pollution, you know. So true, I think so true. this sort of uh, beats all of the theories of all that we've seen with this odd even and all this, you know, yeah, all of everything that. Yeah, is yeah. insignificant, you know. I think this is the cleanest Delhi air I don't remember, uh, you know, in the month of April and almost now we are at. You know, That's yeah. so true. And even the weather, you know, talking, yeah, talking about all of this, even the weather in Delhi, it has been, I would say it's, it's almost pleasant day in and day out. Yeah. Apart from like maybe just a day or two here and there where, where it gets a little hot and even then it's yeah. not like very hot. Otherwise, so you tell me, I'll tell you a simple question. When was the last time you remember on 30th of April in Delhi mm-hmm. you did not sit on the AC in the day? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a welcome change yeah? and I think uh, apart from the fact that of course a lot of our plans have just come to a crashing halt hmm. whatever we had planned has been pushed indefinitely in terms of work. But right. apart from that, I think yeah, unless you've been very unfortunate to be stuck in a place where you're not supposed to be or you were in transit, which has obviously affected some people. Right. Right. But right. I think if people like you and me, we are at home, we are with family, we can't ask for more, you know, at a time like this. It's so awesome. I would completely agree with you on this. That I mean, yeah, it has 
like globally it has been affecting a lot of lives and all of that is happening but the i would say our mother nature is healing yes of course yeah i think humanity at large is healing of course apart from the people who have unfortunately been affected with this right. virus you know but there are recoveries yeah there are people who are yep. uh, you know not being able to make it but i think the other way to look at it is you know this is going to prepare uh, humanity across the globe mm-hmm. on how to lead more responsible lives in the future you know and uh-huh. it will also prepare governments you know about uh, you know things that they have to look beyond it even the political movements you know they have to look at uh you know what is happening inside the country at all given times you know mm-hmm. because we have created this uh, modern world so called you know, mm-hmm. and things are much simpler and, and we have in thousands of flights going every hour from these huge airports and and all of that but then there's a price you have to pay for that absolutely because as easy as it sounds uh, you know they say it's a global world it's a global society mm-hmm. but then you also have to uh be prepared to pay the price of you know everyone being able to go everywhere like right. you just see right. you know so i think in that sense people are going to be a lot more careful and i think uh governments everywhere are going to monitor uh not just you know the regular stuff they are going to look beyond that you know because i mm-hmm. think global health is going to really really come off importance finally you know right 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 that right. should have been there but for some reason uh, you know i think uh-huh it's like people just have the back at the back of their head that everything is going to be all right and you know we have everything in place but it's clearly yeah. not the case yeah <laughs> you know, so anyway yep absolutely all right so that was a good you know a catch up session from what is happening right now and yeah. uh moving ahead from here i would first of all like to thank you for agreeing to be a part of no. this thank whole thank you for having me here on shuti out loud <laughs> pleasure yep always, yeah and yeah absolutely you know this is going to be an amazing conversation i already know that and for the audience who have been listening to our conversation till yet so before going yeah. ahead i would like to tell them a little about you and then sure. once i stop you know you take it ahead from there like i sure. say a few words and then you sure. go on and just you know tell who exactly is when i okay okay please All go right. ahead yeah <laughs> so yeah from what i have read and you know from what i have known is that yeah. you are a vocalist you are a composer you are a keyboard player and you have a versatile mu- uh, musical background yes, yes and you grew up listening to indian classical music from a very early age yes that's correct because my mom is a classical singer as you know right so it was very much uh, part of the home as food and water yeah. and you have done more than 1000 concerts right yes i mean i have not got the exact count but i'm pretty sure close that close by yeah that. <laughs> it would be less because you know it's been almost like uh, close to two decades now since i took to stage so wow, yeah. yeah so yeah that was just you know that was all that i was contributing to your introduction and from here on please just take it ahead and tell our amazing audience who is vinay gupta <laughs> oh, so i would say first of all i would just like to say that i am just like all of you just another person who believes in uh, i think following his passion and i think the greatest gift that i got uh, you know since i was about 4 i realized was music mm-hmm. and uh, i had you know very supportive parents my mom was herself a professional classical singer she sings hindustani khayal Uh, she's from the Rampur Sadar in tradition. Her name is Vinita Gupta, mm-hmm. and uh, there was always music in the house. And uh, I got my first keyboard when I was four years old. My uh, dad got that for me. I think someone the family was traveling abroad. Uh-huh. I was very lucky to get one because you know these things were not that easily available at that time. Right. Because I'm talking of like early 90s, and yeah, and. Uh, 
right after that i think i was on stage and i was slightly more than four playing one of the tunes my father taught me and i think that was really the beginning of my journey on stage i mean still it was obviously baby steps but mm-hmm. you know i think that sort of uh, was the starting point and yeah then i uh, i think my biggest fascination uh, in general was instruments of all kinds you know so i i played the drums uh, mm-hmm. the drum kit for about for about 5 years when i was uh, i grew up in a hill station called kasoli in himachal i was also born in delhi but we moved to kasoli when i was very very small and uh, yeah and then I think the reason I eventually took to the keyboard as my primary instrument is, you know, because I used to love so many instruments that I uh-huh. felt keyboard is that one instrument which allows you to at least experience the sound of all the possible instruments, you know, even mm-hmm. if you don't have the real thing. So, you know, right. the synthesizer right. gives you that option. And also, I think which is where my real journey for and love for music production really began, you know, which was to produce. Uh, create my own music and to be able to record it and you know uh, I think once I got out of uh, school I and uh, I think uh, I got my first sound card when I moved to Delhi back I mean for college in uh, Hindu College Delhi University and that's when I really started uh, my journey as a music producer and mm. in between Kasoli and Chandigarh and Delhi sorry I was in Chandigarh. Uh-huh. Uh, city beautiful as you know it yeah and uh, there i uh, was in an anglo indian school called saint stephens and a couple of years in a different school but i think those three years in saint stephens were very significant because my principal uh, he was very very encouraging and he was himself uh, leading the school choir and i used to arrange all the music for them and mm. i think working with the choir taught me a lot because uh, you know to be singing with uh, and performing with so many people together you know right. teaches you a lot and in a choir everyone has to sing for everyone you know right. it is not right. just like a regular you know stage performance where there is one singer and that mm. you know so everyone has to hear everyone else for it to sound good so i think that really taught me a lot about harmony which eventually obviously helped my keyboard playing as well because uh, keyboard is a harmonic instrument uh-huh. and it's origin from the piano and uh, yeah and college was a lot of fun and <laughs> as you would know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know all the college fests of the yeah the university north campus south campus in name it Absolutely. you know yep. all the college competitions and you know i think you get to really express yourself that's one really good thing about a place like the university yeah, and back then the music scene was really really alive and kicking it's still mm-hmm. is, but it's a little different now i would right. say especially in the sense of independent slash indie music it used to be uh-huh. uh what we used to call pop rock fairs and uh, this i think they're still in the form of a mag- magazine called rsj rock street you know mm-hmm. do a lot of gigs you know everywhere from rodi garden to tokoy cottage to cafe morrison to and you know there would be just yeah. bands out of college who would be just playing their favorite rock bands <laughs> as covers or you know even yeah. the originals would be completely like westernized compositions right 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 yeah. right so i think that was a great time and uh, which is when i also met i would say the the second better half of my musical career which happens to be my very close friend uh, and a uh, music producer co-producer joe mm-hmm. malikar mm-hmm. who is now in bangalore and uh, yeah he and i started making music together and i think i was in first year college just around 18 ah. and uh, and in fact coincidentally he was the reason I also ended up uh, meeting Palash and the entire band of Euphoria because he used to work for them oh so I was, okay actually so how this whole thing happened is i don't know if i got into the details last time so <laughs> i i got a sound card so the thing with my parents was that you know like all indian parents uh-huh. like not just indian parents i think the any dance parents they want their yeah. kids to do well in the academics regardless you know right. so, absolutely so those are my parents that you know if you do well in your 12th sports then uh-huh. you can get whatever you want in terms of you know cuz i wanted to set up my studio in delhi by then and all hmm. so they said but like the side of the college and you know if each we just want to know that you are sincere about what you want to do right and if you do well in your academics then you can hmm. do whatever you want apart from that so hmm. as luck would have it i got a pretty decent score like 92 oh, and okay. I hardly used to study but 
you know so that's a pretty good I score i would say <laughs> it's not just decent I mean, it's a pretty good things, score <laughs> these these figures are like insignificant now i mean I that's true you know five years back was like i think the cutoff was 100 percent yeah <laughs> gone to insane levels it's like artificial intelligence and human intelligence the barriers are just closing Absolutely. day by day but yes back <laughs> in our days i would say 92 percent was a pretty good score yeah it was yeah at least you could get from college in north campus yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah absolutely so, <laughs> like i can say yeah like a hundred times here <laughs> yeah. so, so yeah so once that happened then i got my first sound card and but we had to get it from abroad because back then you didn't used to have amazon deliveries of all these gear that you need that you can get now right so i got that and now i didn't know how to use that piece of equipment equipment because uh-huh. you know, even youtube videos and all were not that accessible mm-hmm. that, you know mm-hmm. about the ticket back as they are now so i was just looking for someone who could help me with the basics of recording and you know how to go about it uh-huh. and then a friend uh, a tabla player is very close friend in fact uh, so uh son of one of the most well known classical uh, tabla players uh, his name is Suraj Nirpan he mm-hmm. uh, put me across to another friend who was a sound engineer and okay. so the his name was Shiv when he forwarded me to Joe he said you know there is a friend of mine Joe okay. he works for our class in the studio here and uh-huh. they have the same sound card that you got for the studio so right. i said that's great and right after that we connected they were these guys were playing at uh, ip college and uh, i just all i remember is the first time we met we created mm. a song you know oh. we've not never met each other we've never known anything about each other uh-huh. but he came to my place and he was like he was a drummer also uh-huh. so you know i said he is at uh, you know he was a tune and he said can i play some drums to it i said mm. yeah so he recorded something i recorded something and the song was done like overnight oh, and wow. right then he was like you know why don't we work together i was like yeah for sure let's see what like we can do together and you know that's when i really suddenly you know from wanting to do something it just translated to like you know mm. jumping right into the deep end yeah and yeah and then we did a lot of advertising together we worked for uh, i think pretty much everyone one could possibly put one's name on in terms of advertising radio all of that mm. and uh, once i got out of college i also got the opportunity to traveled to Boston on a Fulbright scholarship to study performance and composition and pop vocals mm-hmm. where we had uh, students from uh, six countries across the world from uh, West Africa from Mali from Ireland mm-hmm. from South Africa uh-huh. from uh, obviously the United States and uh, Brazil and uh, I think that was a great experience where we all was you know from different cultures and musical mm-hmm. backgrounds just staying together in one place making music understanding wow. music and you know sharing yeah. ideas so that really opened up my mind uh, to you know the world of music around me not just in india but all across the world absolutely and yeah and uh, after that as as luck would have it i came back and i got the opportunity to join you for your keyboard player and yeah mm-hmm. and there was a lot of traveling after that and Yeah, and eventually I wanted to uh, be a singer and composer myself for uh-huh. my own with my own band and also another fusion project with my mom called Khayal. Right. So that's yeah, as much as I could just the journey. So <laughs> Thank you for you know putting all of that in words and sharing basically what has uh, I would say sort of you know made you from a very young age to. <laughs> we can say you know till today so yeah that was i i think that has been a very um inspiring journey throughout where you got so many opportunities so many learnings and so much of exposure uh, also oh, yeah. uh like for how long were you in uh you was where you I was there for almost almost 2 months you know okay. so it was a completely sponsored uh, program where uh-huh. we were sta- uh, guests of the US state department and uh, i still remember that they were very very kind and generous because uh-huh. we were national guests so uh-huh. apart from you know staying at the university in boston uh, in northeastern university which mm-hmm. is where we were based they took us to tanglewood music festival where we heard the boston symphony orchestra live you know oh. performing some of the pieces that one could only 
dream of hearing on record, you know. He yeah. heard them perform all that live. They took us to a uh, Berkeley School of Music for a couple of sessions, mm-hmm. hearing the band there, meeting the musicians there. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, apart from that, we all had to create music pieces together. And I still remember, you know, in small, small things like, you know, they took us to, uh, you know, hear, I mean, uh, Witnessed the Lion King musical live at uh, on Broadway Street in Times Square, New York. Oh wow! So that that must happened. have been something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then we heard the uh, the opera Don Giovanni live. Oh you know, wow! With the real uh, opera experience, you know, with the, the all the actors and the music being played live to the scores, you know. That must have so, been absolutely beautiful. I, I, yeah, I can I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Life-changing experience. You know, things you could, you've only seen in the movie that best. You know, in Hollywood movies or yeah. you know, on YouTube. So yeah, all that came to life, and uh, yeah, it was. I think it was great. Just you know, uh, seeing people from other countries and how good they are really at what they do. You know, because I think uh, for me the basic difference between music students. In India and the West, although it's changing now, I would say mm-hmm. in India, given if you talk about the current times, but right. you know, till quite not so far back, you know, if you want to be a musician abroad, you go to a music school or a music music college. Right, right, right. right. That's it's as simple as that. You know? Yeah. Treat it just like another profession, and absolutely, that, it's not just something like an add-on. Yeah. It's, yeah, a, it's, it's a it's a, like yeah. a hobby. You know? Yeah. In India, it's like you know. You, do I expect it to uh, like follow academia mm-hmm. and do music on the side? And mm-hmm. I think most people lose the best years of their life when they are more likely to sort of take the leap into the uh, to the big stage, you know, doing just the regular stuff and not giving all their time to what they should, which is their art. Right. You know. Absolutely. So I think, and and that one, and of course, I think the biggest difference I found was, uh, you know, like say, uh, you know, you talk about say, musicians would come from Brazil. Mm. They speak Brazilian, they know Brazilian music, they know mm. their folk stuff, mm-hmm. they know their folklore, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, they know their own roots, you know. Right. I think we in India mostly are trying to emulate the West. Right. You know, we are, a better I, example. Absolutely. And we are missing are, on that point. You know, recently yeah. I had the privilege to also perform with Lavi Shaikhan sir. So I mm. take a line out of what he said. He said, you know, we learn uh, Western instruments from Indian teachers. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> that for me is, you know, right. the definition of most Indian musicians. You know, where we in great awe of what comes from the West, whether it's jazz, uh-huh. whether it's rock and roll. I mean, that's great. You know, I love a lot of that music. Right. But you know, you are not that. That comes from there. Exactly. So either you go there and study, and you know, mm. I think great John McLaughlin once said, "You can, you should play music that you have lived." Mm. You know? Well, that's that's so, absolutely yeah, yeah. So I think that is something that came across, and I think the only reason I had a great connect uh, with all the musicians and the students. Uh, the program was because uh-huh. I shared, I was able to share uh, my Hindustani classical background with them. Hmm. You know? They're not, you know, you can't go to, uh, you know, Boston and try and show them like fancy keyboard or piano chops, you know. Right, they are already right, right. masters of that, you know, as so they were like 18, 19 year old music students who were writing scores for Philharmonic Orchestra. They were writing, hmm. symphony, you know, yeah. we cannot, you know, in any way touch their level of, uh, you know, just. I would say musical prowess over, you know, their skills because they have studied music since they were kids, you know, just like we study like English and Hindi over here. Right. You know, right, so they're right. very, very musically literate people. And I mm. think uh, the one and only thing they respect anyone from, not just India, from anywhere in the world uh-huh. is what represents their culture and their music. Mm. You know, which I think is a fine example of if you see some mm. of the greatest classical exponents either towards the, you know, I would say the better half of their careers either moved abroad, whether it's Zakir Sensa or uh-huh. whether it's Hari Prasad or Ravi Shankar, uh-huh. Sir, Ravi Shankar, uh-huh. Shankar so is because I think, and as unfortunate as it may sound, especially the fine arts, you know, the greatest, mm-hmm. uh, you know, description of our musical culture and heritage, the classical arts, the, you know, the Indian classical arts, 
have much greater respect abroad even today so true that's that's absolutely true unfortunately so, because you know i would say that people here they have forgotten about our culture and you know that so we, i think i think you are basically very confused when it comes to our cultural identity you know that's and and that's funny because you know even yeah. while living in your own country people are like yeah. this happens when people possibly you know like if somebody moves to some other country and then yeah they are torn and they are confused that whether to follow our uh, country's culture or something 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 but yeah. people here in india while living in india they are still confused and that confuses me <laughs> that how how can that no, be possible i'll put it very simply you know uh-huh. india is the only country that when the football world cup happens every four years we'll be some other country we'll be argentinian hmm. we'll be chilean or you know we'll be brazilian which is fine it's good right. too but you know literally you you know what you don't understand is those people for them this is their religion you know right. you will never see a brazilian wearing an indian cricketer t-shirt and cheering mm. for india you know right so, right right i right, think right. not just that and i think you know it's also the you know the great great influence of film music on our lives you know aha uh-huh. aha uh-huh. for so i think a regular average indian child has only exposure to music and arts exactly. and culture is yeah. the movies yeah you know yeah he's grown up listening to these actors and you know the whole idea of how music is presented on a film screen and that's what they hear on radio you know unless right. you're a musician yourself or there's someone who's seriously into the arts in the house you know yeah. for for a for a normal listener you know it's basically whatever they've heard on radio or they've seen on tv hmm. so which is again it comes back to the point that you know a lot of people have obviously accepted this that in india at the end of the day people only end up taking note of the voice even in popular music you know hmm. they they would not know uh, you know i would say still most people 9 out of 10 people do not really understand what a band is you know yeah for them it is just a performance for entertainment and play songs that you like what you want to hear yeah you know and you want to drink you want to you know basically even it's just like a party where music is in the background Hmm. You know. Yep. We still uh, have a long way to go in terms of listening culture, and you know, giving that real respect to Absolutely. artists who's on stage, you know, and giving his time to you yeah. as a as a performance. Yep. Yep. So, yep. You know, that said, I would still say that you know now the time we are looking at, you know, the post two thousand generation, uh-huh. you know, they're all people who are adults and a plus, you know, even mm-hmm. plus people. I think they have a very different mindset, and I think they are going to be the futures of uh, not just this country, but the future of you know the music society, so to say. Mm. You know, and they are yeah. people who grown up with the technology. They are right. people who That's... have access to everything, uh, you know, on the palm of their hands or the phone. So they have heard music from everywhere. Right. They have access to like uh, you know anything they would want to listen to themselves. You know. Like just the way we are just being able to do something like this podcast right now, who could have Absolutely. done something like this a decade ago? You know? Absolutely, so true. People, so if you're, I think it's more about you. You know, you got to be curious. You have to be a seeker. If you're a seeker, you everything is out there. Hmm. So it just depends on how curious you are at the end of the day. How how inquisitive your mind is. Exactly. You know? Are you yeah. happy with? It's like, are you happy with you know, just the regular dal chawal, or you want a set? You know, yeah <laughs> i think that defines that really defines uh, you know taste and uh, an audience right for so, so not just an artist for anyone hmm absolutely so actually uh, you know i was discussing with my brother today it says yeah, that yeah. um i me my siblings we grew up in a family where my parents were very open minded like they mm-hmm. never forced us to do something or they you know not be no Even the parents that a lot yeah. of my friends have. But, likewise, I think likewise. Yeah, but still, like you know, we were talking about the Indian classical music, and my brother has been really exploring that part in his life these mm-hmm. days. And he was just showing us uh, this uh, this rag, um, the, the Malhar rag. Uh, is it right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. So yeah, so we were just discussing that. That comes that. from the rain, from the rainy season, from the monsoon. Right. 
was singing it so beautifully and we were completely mesmerized. Oh, so, I didn't know your brother. Your brother sings. I didn't know. No, 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 not my brother. He was a that of okay. of <laughs> okay, very okay, beautiful okay. so okay. that actually you know that's how conversation actually started and we were just talking about that our parents were very open minded and my mom yeah. was very i would say um liberal in that sense and we grew up listening to michael jackson we grew up listening to abba oh. and pony and but somehow yeah. we never got the uh, exposure for our indian classical music Of course, because see, the point is also if you look at it, we were all like '90s kids, right? Ah, uh-huh. ah. Uh-huh. '90s was the time India was beginning to realize its own cultural identity, and also because of liberalization and you know, globalization was it was a boom at that time. Mm-hmm. We suddenly had access. You know, it was when Channel V, MTV was at its peak, and all they right. used to play was popular stuff from the West. Ah, 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 ah. So I think it's. So it's more to do with that time that we grew up in, you know. Yeah. Where it was, it was cool to listen to like absolutely uh, like what you call uh, cross-cultural music. You know? Hmm. And uh, yeah, and I think uh, like you said, Michael Jackson. Even I still remember. I think I bought the cassette of Thriller some three times because the <laughs> taste used to wear out, you know. Yeah. So, you know and i think the man who really changed it and began to change it was obviously the great era rahman in 97 mm. something about you know yeah you know i think that's when people realize that even music which has indian classical roots can sound cool you know absolutely it can sound uh, hip you know it is not just that regular you know i mean i'm not going to put anyone down but that whole era of you know the anu malik the jatin lalit right. all that right you right know, right he right, right. suddenly a man who came up with a global sound you know this so is music you can you can hear carnatic influences you can hear hindustani influences there suddenly be an alap there will be suddenly a drop which takes you into you know jazz you know and there will be suddenly some little eastern instrument playing in one of the songs and there'll be a symphony orchestra back you know backing like a ballad right nice. you know? so so things which were never done before you know and 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 i think that sort of uh, at least changed the way film music was perceived i would say in our generation i would say that was really the changing point it really sort of caused a turmoil within the industry while you were still working in it i think he always Did it on his terms. He still does, you know. And, hmm. and so I think that's what sort of set him apart and started a new wave of, you know, fusion and uh, world music, Absolutely. you know, within the Absolutely. the kinds of film music. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah, of course, there was a big indie pop boom then. Like I said, even when the bands I worked with uh, for a while it was quite a while. Like in fact, Euphoria was. The, in, you know that was the time. You know the late nineties. It was right. Euphoria. It was Silk Road. It was Lucky Ali, Adnan mm. Sami. You know. They were absolutely and, yep, yep, completely. And you know Junoon, yeah. of course, from across the border. Oh, Spain, you know? Yep. I mean, we used to listen to bands. We we are the you know I would say the last generation. Actually, it actually grew up listening to Indian bands. Not that's like, true. And after that, it just sort of disappeared. Right. Yeah, because see, most people just went solo. Whether it was KK, whether it was Mohit Chauhan, you know, yeah. and they all went into uh, you know playback. And I would not blame hmm. them for it because you know the only place apart from down south in Chennai that there hmm. is a industry for music in general is Bombay, which is Bollywood hmm. you know, film film industry. You know, it's the only place where you can say you will get jobs. Right. You know, with commissioned jobs, like you know, it's, it's a place where you can go looking for work as an artist. Right, 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 right. You right. know, and it has obviously, and being a cake capital, it has it has the advertising, it has the television, it has the film industry. All of it. You know, yeah. so if you're a creative artist, yeah, unless uh, you know, you really have that kind of courage to do something like what Pilar did or say what my friends at local train are doing now even in 2020 oh they you know? are absolutely <laughs> amazing by the way yeah, i think in fact we last met at their concert yep 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 <laughs> so yep yep, yep. They and they again, oh they were so yeah. good and that was the first time that i actually saw them and i was like oh okay all right yeah. where was i you know why did i miss all of this but yes since then i have been following them i have been listening yeah. to them and So, so see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that's the band because see, it's a group of friends who've grown up together, listening 
and playing music and they're just still doing that you know right so i think that is the basic difference between a band and you know individual acts is you know bands find it very hard to last the distance because if you have to agree to sacrifice personal ambitions and you know just hmm. work for the same goal and you know you all have to really really be connected and bonding to a different level to want to do it for that long you know right so i think that yeah so that of course has changed and i think also shruti now the difference is the mass consumption of music in our country is primarily bollywood music which was not uh-huh. the case you know 10 15 years back Yep. you know you used yep. and obviously i missed out the other great name dear friend in fact rahul gam from the great band india ocean mm. they were also i mean i still remember listening to pande at kmc fest and it was insane mm. you know the entire crowd was singing yeah. was, you know amazed because you know coming uh, from a place like chandigarh to delhi it was a big change that you know there are bands in delhi which have cult following you know? mm. and mm. people actually listen to their music and they're not playing covers they're just playing their own stuff right you know but yeah that has big time changed i would say because uh, most of the uh, even venues that used to support artists like that are very very few now because you know mm. now uh, even the clubs i mean i myself performed at some of them in the last few months they mm. their uh, policy is very clear that they will only uh, want to call an artist who show is going to sell with the audience with the you know at large yeah yeah if i was to say even if you know despite everything i was to kind of really tight band together and say if i was to go into any club in delhi in uh-huh. 2020 and say i play you know heavy metal they would uh-huh. say we, we cannot get you right it's right. as simple right. as that right. it, it does not right. matter how good you sound That's you true. could do that like yeah. when we were in college you could do that right. were, but not anymore not anymore yeah, because you know hot cars really is all of that that was a time you know mm. so all sort of uh, sort of i think they all succumb to you know industry pressure you can say it or you know uh, apart from that i think yeah that has been a major change that from then and now like yeah. i said they'll you know there are very few there are people who are still doing it like the band we just spoke about so we have uh, talked about so many amazing things about your journey and i think it would be you know right to coin this term for you that you are absolutely a well rounded musician you know coming from the background <laughs> of <laughs> yeah. no because you know after uh, having this beautiful discussion of your journey and i completely because earlier yes obviously i had few ideas about the are you what have you done and this and that but now i can absolutely feel that you picked up your roots and then you went to states and you know you got this absolutely amazing experience there and then you came back and you were with you for and since then you have been on this amazing journey of creating your own music so i think yeah so all of it has together And I think I was very fortunate to meet the right people at the right time. Yeah. Say. But apart from that, I think yeah, the only one uh, big decision I took was yes, that I wanted to do this seriously and full time, and that's something I decided right when I was like in first year of college. Hmm. So, so for me, you know, the terms were very clear that if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this 100%. It's not uh-huh. going to be something like that I just do once in a while for fun, and you know, I think. yeah most musicians have to at at a certain point if you're really serious about it you know you know why you do it it's not because you're on stage and because you know there lights yeah. on you or uh-huh. so people sort of admire what you do it's because you really love what you do so i think that's something that i was very clear that is there's something that i really love from the bottom of my heart it's music and that's what i did right absolutely so, so when i because you know you have had such a uh, varied experience so i yeah. just want to ask you something that what all languages you have sort of you know <laughs> tried singing in that would be something uh, that yeah i am quite curious to know about <laughs> i think being a north indian the only 
limitation is uh, i mean we, we hindi speaking people and of course english uh-huh. happens to be a pr- primary language right. for everyone who studied in post independent india so <laughs> that and of course i would say there has been a bit uh, quite a bit of the punjabi influence uh-huh. 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 Uh, coming from my mom's side and you know all the years i was in chandigarh right. so i do really like punjabi music and i do perform a bit of it obviously uh-huh. at the commercial scale for for certain events but i all i really have this dream of writing and producing something original in punjabi you know oh wow that can be that is something that yeah. really comes from uh, you know quite a strong connection in terms of you know my upbringing over the last uh, decade especially since we moved to chandigarh and then delhi uh-huh so that of course and yeah i mean i got quite a bit of exposure to uh, malayalam music because of uh, you know working uh, with a uh, person who was uh, my friend jo i told mm-hmm, you he's, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's from kerala mm-hmm. so i i in fact heard a lot of cool music uh, you know i'm sure you also heard of the band called avial and yep yep, yep 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 so that was a great exposure to all that kind of music and you know i uh, understood quite a bit about carnatic music also from it because mm-hmm. what hindustani is for north indians is carnatic for south indians right yeah 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 so yeah. and yeah and he has was trained in rhythm so you know it was it was nice just getting to know the other side of classical music from you know the other end of the country mm-hmm. so yeah that of course and yeah and like once we had in fact uh, worked on a malayalam song that he had written and uh-huh. yeah, we put that out so yeah i mean although i didn't sing it but i had sang some harmonies i mean i could get the basic essence of what the song was saying so mm. you know so yeah that was the one experiment i did with another language which is not my native tongue so do you yeah. uh, uh so do you normally uh, speak punjabi at home or do you have friends or how comfortable mm. are you with the language basically because I, hindi and english i no yeah, but they are primary yeah native right. tongue to us no so, so the thing is see, my, my wife she is punjabi she is a uh i'm like sick by uh-huh. uh, like she's a sadani so from uh-huh. chandigarh so even though she is uh, you know from that side right. i mean even her parents they both like mostly english speaking people her dad has been a government servant all his life uh-huh. so they were also very i would say still they were not like the teeth punjabi yeah, so yeah. Hmm. but you know uh, going into that family i think uh, one definitely experiences a lot of that culture you know right. like i think some of the most beautiful uh, experiences i have had is visiting you know the gurdwaras and you know, hmm. in, i would say the whole the way the sikh wedding is conducted the kirtan and the shabad this is just yeah. very very uplifting it's, it's magical you know hmm. i think in fact uh, it's the most uh, i would say uh, i don't know what uh, other word to use but the most dignified way of conducting a religious practice is what i felt with the hmm. you know the gurdwara is cleanest place they do right. so much of you know service for the community anyone from anywhere any walk of life can go there at any time and they give food to eat and place right. to stay yeah right you know right. and i think it's just you know uh, the sanctity of religion is maintained in that place hmm. so you know that's something that has really uh, had an impact definitely over the years you know because i i think uh, it's the most open faith and uh-huh. they embrace all other faiths without holding any prejudice Absolutely. or judging anyone so i got the opportunity to work with the great abhishek gill sir uh-huh. and spent a few uh, you know wonderful times with him in the studio practicing and jamming and he is a way, you know is one of those rare people i have seen he not only knows his language and is proud of it he even his lyrics on stage he writes mm. them in punjabi so i have this great in fact this lockdown happened we were supposed to do quite a few bits uh-huh. <laughs> they got pushed but i was very keen uh, you know at a certain level to in fact i think it's a, it's a very good opportunity to understand something uh, you know that i always wanted to which is sikh uh, culture and punjabi poetry which i think he is a great great exponent of Hmm. You know, all this music is you know purely uh, absolutely you know, you know i think authentic uh, meaningful punjabi music okay so vinayak you know we i have known you as a musician <laughs> all my life like literally that's how i actually you know got to know you yeah, yeah so yeah. if so i'm going to put you in the spot like right here and uh-huh. say if you didn't become a mus- musician what would you be doing right now i think uh, i already i am doing uh, what i would be doing 
apart from music which is growing plants you know because uh-huh. I, my father is uh, i mean he's an, he's an iit gold medalist turned horticulturist slash farmer for his life that's what he did for a living oh so wow we so we have a plants nursery which my wife and i run jointly where we uh-huh. grow you know thousands of plants which are our extended family and uh-huh. you know and we we do things like landscaping we design gardens we consult people on everything to do with plants you know oh wow and, like yeah, i so, had this idea that you have this amazing nursery but i did not know all the details of you know how you actually got into this and yeah please do yeah, so like, like, i'm i'm a, you know a one half of my mother and my father obviously uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. you know i mean by virtue of both and literally that is what i'm doing with my life because my father gave me the plants and my mother gave me the music, music so yeah. you know so i sort of uh, and i think the two are very connected nature has its own music which is i think the most beautiful music the sounds of nature yeah and, and yeah and i think but in fact as a practice every day i have a special dedicated music system in my nursery and my plants are hearing music for hours every day you know that oh, wow. i think it, i think i think it helps them grow better and i think there have been scientific theories in the recent years to prove that you know music has a very good effect on plants so. yeah i have heard about <laughs> it so please just you know share that playlist and possibly you know i will also make my i will also you know try to i mean it's no particular playlist i think it should be just good music you know anything anything so like basically it's yeah anything apart from death metal i think would uh-huh. not do any harm to plants <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah that i mean i have heard about this but i actually never gave it a shot but now that you have said it i'll definitely you know put some music out the there is, with my plants you know just yeah. more to vibrations right it's, right. it's very simple you know there is no substitute less i mean just because they can't speak they have the same life and form and cells as us mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. so and i have seen this you know you you take one plant mm-hmm. the same plant in two different houses will behave differently mm-hmm. so a person who loves the plant will nurture it and it will always flourish and you know because i have at close quarters we've seen people you know uh, a lot of people who are interested in plants uh-huh. but i would say even in that there too as the people who look at a plant as a showpiece in the house they just want a very uh, beautiful looking thing with just like another decoration you know but they won't really care to even water the plant they'll leave it all to you know how to help and it's just another article in the house and there's another category you know people who really love nature and who are true pure nature lovers and you know and i think uh, like for example my father is still like is above 16 now he still does about 2 3 hours of active gardening you know every day mm. so and wow. there's nothing that he's ever passed that has ever died so you know so, wow. so the same green thumb is real out so i've seen yeah. that you know So yeah that that of course so since you asked me i think <laughs> if, if, if for some reason i mean i wouldn't have taken my music that seriously i think i would have definitely been connected with the with the plants yeah. which is something i'm still doing as much uh-huh. as i can although i let my wife take the lead there because i'm <laughs> basically a nomadic musician as you know <laughs> yeah. having concerts whenever i'm called so so possibly you know i will be uh, inviting gehna for one of the episodes as well you know talking about sure. plants and everything and i think that would be another amazing conversation sure sure absolutely yeah. that will be great in fact she'll be more than glad to have this conversation with you absolutely i am definitely you know going to get back in touch with you on this and yeah, i am yeah. going to schedule gehna for one of the episodes for sure that'll be amazing <laughs> look forward <laughs> all right so when i you said that you know you have done like you have done like it's not just about saying but you have actually mm-hmm. done so many concerts mm-hmm. so um do you remember any particular special request that was made on one of your shows maybe funny maybe weird <coughs> maybe beautiful maybe very emotional anything like i was just going to ask in a good way or in a bad way because they've been both obviously so let's just go ahead with both of them <laughs> uh i think uh, in a good way i think yes whenever someone requests for any of my original songs uh huh which obviously happens when the art when the audience is a little known you know right. i think there's nothing more special than an audience requesting for one of your songs right you know? right right whenever i remember i think i was playing at uh, at a piano man and someone requested for uh 
Tore Ben Pia, one of my songs, which had composed with mom. So that was a very special mm. moment, you know. And yeah, and funny requests, of course, they happen all the time, you know, because a lot of the time they're playing for completely alien audiences, you know, uh-huh. private concerts, corporate concerts, and you know, they'll be just this one drunk guy. Uh-huh. And this, this idea, <laughs> of how things happen on stage and he literally want to talk to you in the middle of your song you know right. so singing <laughs> and how do you expect a person who's singing to talk to you you know Absolutely, and then yeah. and they're like and okay so then eventually you let the guitar player take a solo and then you're like and this guy will shout at kid you not as loud as he possibly <laughs> wants to just put on one side of you you know <laughs> <laughs> probably you know they think that you the louder you shout the more you're going to be heard uh uh-huh. and you know that is still okay but i think the more dangerous thing is when someone uh, especially i think the case is a lot more in say when uh, one is performing in a club situation mm-hmm. that when someone wants to get in, get on stage and because they can hum a bit or they're a bathroom singer they think yeah. that now is their moment to seize the mic and that yeah. is the point when normally i try and leave the stage and i'm like okay this is your stage now <laughs> if you want to because you know what happens is uh, i i mean in general i just feel that uh, you know like i said again it, it all boils down to concert etiquette mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that's still uh, uh, i would say it is different uh, without trying to divide the you know the sort of landscape but you know i think th- th- there are a lot more concert etiquette if the moment you go to you know anywhere down uh, outside of north india whether it's bombay right, whether it's right, bangalore right, right. in right. south india i think you know i mean we are we are missing the completely you know, i would not completely you know what i mean you know i absolutely know Our what you mean and it makes me very Indiana, sad you know you know Haryana and UP have not done too much of good to concert culture. Not, no, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think it's more than you know. I would not like to single out anyone, any particular uh-huh. group or anyone like that. Uh-huh. But you know, I think it is more to do with how drunk you are. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times That's I realize true, yeah. a person, some people just can't handle their drink, and you know, the it's. it's not something they're meaning to do but they're sort of inebriated so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they eventually just get excited you know so right, right, i think right, experience right. teaches you not to take these things seriously yeah. and sort of enjoy the moment you know so yeah. literally you know this was i would narrate a very decent incident you know this huge huge private event uh-huh. was playing i think in i think it was in gurgaon or one of these like huge hotels um <clears throat> there was <laughs> this gentleman uh you know wearing dark shades in the you know mm-hmm. the night time you know, okay like dark black aviators with a golden frame uh uh-huh. and he kept coming to me in the middle of the song just like i said uh-huh. he wanted he wanted this one song okay and then there were people around him i think who were themselves getting embarrassed that what is this guy doing you know uh-huh. because it was looking funny so eventually and I think that's what experience teaches you. So I just sort of did two lines of that song. I was like, "This is okay, yeah. It's not. He just wants to have a good time. It's not yeah. like he's being disrespectful. He just yeah. really wants this one song. Yeah. You know. So I did it, and you know, and right after I finished that, his uh-huh. wife came up to me. She she's like. Thank you so much for doing this. Like, <laughs> this is literally almost a virus. He's like, thank oh. you so much for listening to me. I was like, you know, that these are the moments which you can remember that concert. Probably I wouldn't have even remembered that concert that well had this moment. Yeah. You know, so it's just about how you look at it. I think you know, and at the end of the day, see, we are we are only as good as the audience. We are there Absolutely. to um, you know let people forget their worries, forget their sorrows. Hmm. At least if, even a momentarily, you know, they should feel happy and go back Absolutely. with a memory. You know? Absolutely. So I think if we are helping them do that, I think our job as a performer is, in the true sense, uh, uh-huh. complete. You know. because i think uh, you know music is always a conversation it is not just for yourself it is for the person who's listening to you right so you know Absolutely. i think one should not get so serious in about oh why you know why do you suppose to ask me to do something it's you know it i think it is the if you call yourself a professional it is your job to cater to everyone you Absolutely. know or otherwise the other route is like you know say what my mom does which is like you know i have taken the classical route i have route to place to a certain quality of audiences mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you don't get into this you know so to say commercial side of uh you know the music scene right, right. you know Absolutely. then you keep it that that purist and that classist uh yeah 
you know sort of environment for your for your art so, so I, yeah so i think it's just about the choices you make and there is no right there is no wrong at the end of the day uh-huh. i think if what you do if it gives you happiness innate happiness that mm-hmm. is when it to it truly has done something worthwhile to your life completely i totally agree with that <laughs> Yeah. So when like what do you feel is uh the best song that you have released so far and <laughs> why would you say that like why why by uh, putting the song I would say that the I mean there's too many more good songs that should still come out of me I mean because uh-huh, I always absolutely. feel there is no best I would always say the there's always a higher benchmark to achieve right you know? so if you were to ask me you know I'm not one of those artists I think even if you were to ask me 10 years later I would still say there's still a better song I could do uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so because absolutely. I I think uh, you know the one good service you can do to uh, yourself as a creative uh, professional or as an artist is always try to challenge yourself and try to step out of your comfort zone right. you know i think uh, what i have seen from my own experience the day you feel oh i have it i have done this right hmm. that's when you will really stop going so i want to never stop going when it comes uh-huh. to it right absolutely but yeah i think uh, personally so far from the journey i would definitely say uh, uh, one of the first songs i put out uh, was dil ki awaaz with mom mm-hmm. which i composed with you that is very very special because mm-hmm. i think that truly summarizes my life which is dil ki awaaz sun sada man mein jo baat keh zara the 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 lyric the, con- the chorus of that song truly defines what i've lived mm-hmm. you know, um following your heart following your dreams and you know speak your mind out and you know follow your passion Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And yeah, another song that's really really special is uh, Tujhe Bin Pia which we were also very fortunate to have got selected for the Radio City Freedom Tour awards. Mhm. And uh, that song is very special also because it's something I again lived, you know, it was when uh, I was in a long distance relationship with him. So, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I think songs just happen I think uh, when you sort of are truly living something, you know. So these these are a couple of them which are, are very very close and Yeah, there's a lot more music that still needs absolutely, to be heard absolutely. and still needs to be created. So I'm absolutely. working on that as we speak, and yeah, I'm very keen to. I don't know in what form, whether in album form or what, but there'll be uh, new music you'll absolutely. be hearing from me uh, the coming time soon. Absolutely, and I am completely, you know, waiting for it because I know, <laughs> and it it will keep happening as you just said that you know something will happen, then again something will happen. So you will keep bringing in some. Absolutely amazing music, and yeah. I'll be on this. The you know the audience side always ready to <laughs> just some more. No, that that's what it, I think motivates people like me to have great listeners like you, uh, who sort of give us the right uh, encouragement and spirit to keep doing what we are doing. Absolutely, because you know I think this the the creativity um, that comes through either. writing or to poetry or to music or even dance mm-hmm. so all of that needs to be sort of you know it, because it i think you should keep it yeah. evolving you know absolutely yeah like yeah said, you should not sound like you sounded 10 years back or 5 years right. back right or, right you right you know it's not just sound whether you are a dancer you know it's like your painting 10 years back should not look the same you know? absolutely because you know it's a journey and you have to just yeah. keep moving ahead you cannot just stop yeah. at one place and say so, this yeah, is my exactly. style and yeah this is how it is you know so that's what i'm saying so for me the difference between the good and the great is that i mean the people we admire you know mm-hmm. like for, i keep going back to someone like yaar rahman because he is the one man you just look at his work in roja okay yeah. then look mm-hmm. at say a movie like tal then look right. at guru or vandana right. santi right. and then right. look at something as recent as uh, i don't know this like slum dog millionaire you know mm. like it is so different you know the person is now working with hollywood directors and you know he has never stuck to one sound he's never Absolutely. stuck to a formula Absolutely. you know but, so but at the same time he has never compromised his his quality has been always like world class is only worked with the best musicians never compromised on you know i think the prime example like you know recently you know there's someone just i mean without naming murdered one of his old songs mm, you know and yeah, 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 you know what yeah, he just yeah. wrote i think that tweet yeah. just uh, 
Absolutely. summarized it all right was right. commission music countless hours and you know so many people working mm. just with one goal to make music that can last a lifetime i think right. you know so i think if you just take inspirations from great people like that i think you'll at least not go off track yeah they, obviously we all have our moment of right. truth and you know, testing uh, periods and you know that no one can be obviously inspired forever and being a constant state of inspiration but you know right. but i think every artist needs to realize that it is your you know artists have the power to influence people and society mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it is your moral responsibility to at least uh, you know be true to what you are doing it does not right. matter what your style is you know but at least uh, don't look at just imitating people and you know don't do right. it just for the money you know you should, you should want to change something you know like in someone's life you know right. through your music i think in whatever sense it, it could be funny it could be deep it, hmm. you know but i i think yeah if if you are saying if you are saying you are presenting a song then that song is got to have some meaning right absolutely yeah. Uh, yeah so i think th- those are the things that i would like to definitely look at and like i said you should never you know look at anything as the absolute because that uh-huh. definitely means that you are putting an end to it you know right absolutely so i absolutely. think the journey is always meant to last forever and i always say that i'm always a new student of music and you know yeah there's always so much more to learn and so much more to explore i i only know very very little so right Hmm. Yeah, that's what I would say. All right, so Greg, if you could, you know, create an eternal memory through your music, mm-hmm. what would it be? Like, what would be the emotion that you would want to sort of just, you know, touch? Uh, I don't know. I, I would say anything that. Uh, I would say love definitely not uh-huh. definitely you uh-huh. know because love is what connects everyone all human beings love right. is the most infinite human emotion mm-hmm. you know and it uh, cuts across all relationships whether it's a couple whether it's a mother to a child whether right. it's uh, you know a fight to do his country uh 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 it's all yeah. love yeah and love and peace for sure you know? mm. i think that's where i come from <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? you know i would say a real world with scenario something like an an imagine meets uh, they'll say you know i don't know yeah <laughs> so, yeah, yeah absolutely so, absolutely uh, i can yeah i'm thinking about it i'm and i'm actually just you know loving it already so yeah i'm just waiting for that song now <laughs> so thanks so yeah i think i think the attempt is just to uh, you know get better at what one does and not just uh you know put something out i'm always very very particular also in fact the first ep that we put out i don't mm-hmm. think i mentioned this story so uh, the making of it i think we never had the opportunity to have these you know cool mm-hmm. smartphones that we had back mm-hmm. then so uh-huh. Uh-huh. the first ep that i did was with uh, mom and me singing and uh-huh. uh, you know like i said jo uh, and i were producing together at that time Right. So it was just for 1819 the first very the very first draft of Tore Bin Pia and all these mm-hmm. other songs on inflections. So we booked the most expensive studio in Delhi. Mm-hmm. Booked the <laughs> most like well known artists and you know, the best plotters, the best percussionists. Whoever mm-hmm. like we yeah. our only criteria was is this guy like the A plus like yeah, yeah. like almost like you know going for the best so uh-huh. to say on paper. And we did like five songs in like I don't know three days or something. You know? Okay. And all of that happened, and then you know we were like very happy at that time. And obviously we were just starting out. Hmm. And we were like, okay, this is fantastic. You know, we got the best musicians on record, and our songs are going to sound great. And you know, hmm. and then we came back, hmm. and, you know, and we heard, and we were like, man, this actually sounds like shit. And he was like, oh. what? No, because for real, we were like, you know, we are. It's not about. Uh, just uh, you know, putting people together on record. It's about having that thought and having that maturity in your thought. Right. So we sort of just took a back step. Obviously, we did take parts out of that, but then mm-hmm. I think that's when the real journey for self discovery starts. You know, that mm-hmm. you don't just say that whatever I do will be the best. Absolutely. Know? So we sort of took a back step. Then came the third cog in the wheel. Aman, a very close friend, was on Bombay. Mm-hmm. So we hired. A, we just wanted another opinion. So we got. Uh, uh, you know my dear friend Amanu. Uh, I told you who's 
फैंटास्टिक अरेंजर एलुमनाइ फ्रॉम ट्रिनिटी कॉलेज ऑफ लंडन एंड देन ही यू वी गोट हिज ओपिनियन ऑन देन वी वी ट्रैक स्टाफ एंड आई थिंक एवरी सॉन्ग हैड सम सेवेन टू एट डिफरेंट वर्जन्स बिफोर द फाइनल वन सो आई थिंक दैट आई थिंक दैट जर्नी एंड दैट ग्रोथ was very important as it still is you know so i uh, don't like you know i am very particular about not just putting say something just randomly recorded out of a phone on the, on just as a video on youtube right, or you right, know right 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 because right. i think uh, yeah whatever anyone hears should from my side be the best i can offer you know hmm. in terms of the listening experience you know it is the easiest thing to do is what most people do these days is content 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 which is like you just record everything because you yeah. have an iphone or a phone you know yeah. and you just put it out there just for getting as much traction and as much viewership but you mm. know i i think i would not ever want to succumb to that social pressure uh uh-huh. uh-huh. and, and i would want whatever i do to have at least uh, my 150% on it and you know yeah i should i think only if i am excited about listening to it will someone else even consider listening to it so absolutely you know i don't want to just put stuff out just because i have just these because, hmm. and i can just switch put press the record button and just put something you know every day so no right i, I don't think not yet you know if one gets to a level where everything you record sounds like a mastered record then uh-huh. you know, Maybe you take it later than so be it, but you know I don't think yeah. I want to go that route you know, anyway. I mean, at any point in the near future, right? Right. Definitely, still put in the hours as much as I can, and you know, uh, only once I feel that there's something that's ready to be shared with, I want to put it out. Hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Vinayak, your son yeah. Rehan. Yeah. Is he already following your footsteps? What would you I mean, <laughs> say about in, that? In a certain sense, we obviously the most obvious answer would be yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he loves music. I mean, particularly likes rock and roll music. Uh huh. Totally bored with Hindustani music, which I believe just like I was when I was a kid. <laughs> so, so much so that two days before I was trying to. You know, finally, with all this lockdown and everyone in the family has been telling me, you know, your son should like start singing songs and all that. I said, you know, as easy as it sounds, mm-hmm. he's got a mind of his own. He has his own personality. Right. He likes music, but then, you know, at at that age, I also don't want to condition his mind to just believe whatever Absolutely. I think is right. You know. Right. So right, I'm letting right. him experience everything. He's listening to everything. He's been to some of my gigs. He's seen his my dad and his grandmother on stage together. Ah. You know? uh-huh. in the something that i think is in uh, even i didn't get to see mm. you know that day so i i think you know uh, but having said all of that yeah i think he really loves music and you know he particularly likes uh, western music you know and i think uh, he's sort of i think imbibing everything in his own subconscious mm. so you know i would not like to limit him in any way and i am of the firm belief that just because i am a musician there is no compulsion that he has to follow this path absolutely if That's he does any so it should mm. it should come from inside him you know because i think every not just child every human being comes with their own destiny and their personality from before you know right. you are just you just have uh, the privilege of guiding that you know yeah so yeah, i would absolutely. not like to define anything for him yeah he has all uh, you know the tools around him when it comes to music when it comes to you know, everything else that we do so i think yeah i would let him just enjoy the process and mm-hmm. if it truly is something that connects with him right. and his inner being it will right. you know translate to something else absolutely so yeah okay. i have said that yeah. yes he truly enjoys the music <laughs> and yeah he, sings uh, you know red hot chili peppers and uh-huh. all the songs these days so yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> that's his current <laughs> yeah okay all right that's absolutely amazing so you must be having so much fun you know seeing him absolutely enjoying all these songs <laughs> and just grooving with them and yeah it must be yeah, amazing i think, yeah. I think children help us to life all over again you know i think this is something you don't realize and i think to realize uh, you know what children truly mean you need to definitely experience them uh, there i mean 
uh, like at close quarters you know mm. so i think that has definitely been a big change because i think no matter how much you say you know we all a lot of people say we love children right but to be with a child as a parent is very very different and, you know i think mm. it sort of changes you in a lot of ways and you know there's also this one person he or she i mean you know whatever case yeah. but they are looking at you like and everything you say or do is having an impact on them on them you know so true so, mm. so it's also a great responsibility but yeah i think one is enjoying the process and these years as they say will never come back so yeah <laughs> it's time to make the most of it and yeah thanks to that uh, the lockdown i think the the best thing is that one is getting to spend maximum time with the family which is very very uh, fortunate you know right. and i think one should treasure this time because we are, we are going to look back at this you know Mm. Few years from now, say we wish we could get that kind of time again with the people yeah. who really wanted to do us. That's true. Trust me, all of us are going to say this, you know, whether Absolutely. it's time with our parents or it's time with uh, you know our siblings or whoever we are with right now. Right. I think Absolutely. this time is something we are most likely to not experience. I mean, you know, hopefully not anytime soon in the future. Yeah. But, you know, in the, in the you know if you look at it in the positive side, uh-huh. like one of my favorite stand up. comedians we the sales you know there's uh-huh. always a bright side uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know just feel there's always a bright side it's just about how right. you get it right absolutely that's true so yeah so but it's great uh, speaking to you shruti and i think for me also to remember a lot of things about myself which i had forgotten i am so years. glad and you know i am absolutely <laughs> loving this conversation like every bit of it same here same here thanks for putting this together i think it's a great <laughs> initiative on your part to you know sort of help people deal with their journey all over again you know you are that one person who will uh, you know make a person pour his or her heart out you know i think yeah. that's also an, that's an art not everyone can do it you know because you know some like this conversation is an art also mm-hmm. like just like everything else and you definitely have that i think you've always been that you were the person who knew all the books of harry potter <laughs> before they came out and i still remember you still you still a jk rowling fan right absolutely every bit and of me you still <laughs> hold, yeah you still hold the alias name so i'm sure oh yes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely absolutely i am just you know i'm just glad that i and now finally i am able to put something that i had out there and just using it judiciously to sort yeah. of you know, just bring people together just bringing the tribe together bringing yeah. the people who want to do something beautiful like like my great yeah creative yeah. skills i think because you're right it's, it's like the right word you use bring the tribe together you know because very important because you know people these days especially in times of excessive social media mm-hmm. have lost the art to connect personally right you absolutely know? yeah it's everything is about instant moment some story some you know you're just putting everything on a general public platform right right you hardly right. ever see anyone sending you a message these days you know? absolutely it's, everything is a reaction it's not even a post it's not even a one liner you know exactly yeah it's like so and so reacted to your photo so it's like okay then that does not tell me whether they wanted to say something to me exactly that's yeah you have just you know used the right word that yeah it's everything is a reaction everything I mean, is a, yeah like, yeah and in in an emoticon cannot replace saying hi how are you you know right so true <laughs> so true you know mm-hmm. as much as that might sound and look cool uh-huh. know, to people who sort of you know follow this whole social media and i'm not like obviously again judging anyone for anything but i just feel that you know people should also realize that you know they there is only that much time so you can either mm-hmm. use it to just look at other people or get better at what you do absolutely. so you know wow i love and, that you what you just said i absolutely love it <laughs> no i like, you know, just because before. that is something uh, that yeah people have it in their mind but somehow they cannot put it in words and that's why they cannot even no, see, see, do it it's easier said than done i'll say it very honestly we are all data addicts we are all uh you know slaves of technology mm-hmm. and subconsciously i realized it has become you know what was say a decade back uh, making a phone call has become 
you know, just checking Instagram and Facebook now, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> because it is so easily accessible. There is right. no lack of data or internet. You know? Absolutely. So Absolutely. in one sense, it's good that, you know, say today I want to know anything about what's happening anywhere. I can just Google it instantly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But at the uh-huh. same time, because of all this social profiling that subconsciously we've all become a part of in such right. a major way, you know, we at some level have started even living lives which is not really ours, you know. So true. It is how we want the world to see it. You know? So true. And I Absolutely. think that is a something that is something we should keep reminding ourselves that, you know, this is not who we are. This is mm. something we just do to connect with the people who we never ever get a chance to meet. You right. Know? But they are not the people who are going to define our lives Absolutely. now or ever, you know. Absolutely. It is what you are doing with your life that is going to be left behind, you know. Like I think the best example, I cannot help talking about this one. One of my favorite, favorite actors I'm sure is yours is uh, mm. Lady Fan Khan, sir. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I think at such a, I mean, I would still say it was a very young age that he just yeah, unfortunately yes. left. Yeah. But left such a great, great impression on the world of cinema, not just on Absolutely. Hollywood. Absolutely. You know, so true. Mm. in such a short time, the guy has done, like, I would say, path-breaking work, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, someone was recently saying that, you know, he is a person who could talk without speaking a dialogue, to speak mm. from sides, you know. Yeah. You know, that, that tells you, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Acting is not all about, you know, he, he broke the prototype, the stereotype that an actor needs to be six feet tall. And absolutely, absolutely. Muscles, so having true. 50 million followers on Twitter, and, you know. None of that is just, this guy just comes in front of a camera and does and yeah. the job and you will not forget that scene once you see it. Right. You know. So I think, yeah, people should not forget, you know, who they started out to be. You know, mm. No matter how far they go and how long they go in the journey, that exactly. you know, it's an important artist, to remember that. Yeah, yeah, an artist starts for the love of painting, not mm. for selling a painting for X amount and fifty X or hundred X right. later. Right, right, you know? right, right. That happens great, but you know, that shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, that should not become the driving force in due course just because that has happened. You know, and mm. I think some of the greatest artists were in fact. Back in the day, when you look at Renaissance and any of, mm. any of the great painters, they were discovered posthumously. Mm. You know, because they right, were so right, right, right. involved and so deep into what they were doing. Exactly. That nothing else really mattered to them, you know, and that's why it is so great, you know. Right. So I think, yeah, it's, I think, without getting too serious on the light of the night, <laughs> day, that we should just uh, right. live in the moment, but uh-huh. at the same time, always remember that. We're all made of the same, uh, you know, social construct. And mm-hmm. while it's good to be social and obviously socially distant at this point, it is, uh, you know, sensibly socially distant at this point, uh-huh. it's also very important to spend quality time with yourself because that is the only thing that will give you new directions and new ways to discover yourself. Right. Absolutely. Hmm. All right, Vinayak. So yeah. I will quickly, you know, few next few questions. Yeah. Just you know, I we'll just quickly do like okay, this that this that this that. Sure, sure. Uh, because these are majorly all the very very super like kind of questions. So um, if you could, and let's say whenever you will, um, yeah. who would you want to open a show for? Who would be that artist? Uh. That's a very tough question, but yeah, I would say the most obvious answer would be my childhood legend and I, I mean icon and greatest uh-huh. inspiration would be Yair Rahman, sir. Anything right. to do with, any, you know, right. anything with his music, so, you know, uh-huh. literally if I could even like be one of the musicians in this band, that would itself be an honor. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's the, that's 100%. <laughs> Yeah. I was expecting that actually. I yeah. was completely expecting that answer. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, like, do you sing in the shower? And what are I think we songs? all do at a certain level. Yeah. So, I what are your sing. songs? <laughs> That's an next I mean, important. I have done that in a while, but yeah, when I when I tra- I would say I sing in the shower more when I'm traveling out. You know, if I'm traveling somewhere in a hotel. Uh-huh. You know, at that time, yeah, mostly I would be singing the song 
which I have planned. I always try and do something new in every one of my shows. Uh huh. Normally, it would be the new song that I'm planning to do on that show. Which oh I wow. Done. <laughs> That's quite uh, interesting, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless it's an idea, obviously, the strikes, which is, I mean, uh-huh. rarely in the Shah zone, mostly happens because Shah is too noisy, you know, to compose. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But normally, it would be brushing up something that I'm planning to do, you know, which I'm not too sure of for the show. Hmm. That's very interesting, yeah. actually. Yeah. Okay. So, how do you feel the internet has impacted the music business? Like I know I you have the, discussed this, but yeah, yeah I would say. No, the, in, the internet has totally changed the game. I think uh, it has made the whole level, uh, the le- the playing field is totally level now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. No one is a bigger artist because they have a bigger record label anymore. Absolutely. Apart from the physical sales, which have obviously finished now, whether it's, uh-huh. I mean, starting from our uh, times, cassettes to then CDs to then, you know, USB drives, it's all oh, now yeah. live digital streaming. You know. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, but I I think in a good way, if you have something to say, mm-hmm. the world is your oyster. You know, you could be anywhere in the world and right. just have an internet connection, and you could you know go viral online with something okay. that is just unique and you know something that just touches a heart somewhere across the internet. You know. Right. So I think yeah, there there is that big advantage, but also like I said, I think I spoke about this when it comes to putting out stuff uh, in terms of my music also. That there's also a lot of excess spam that happens because a lot of people have become, uh, you know, I think uh, complacent with the whole idea that just because you have a digital device, hmm. you can just put out whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like, and just right. publish it, broadcast it, and you know, right. you know, just have an account with a lot of content. But uh-huh. I think that is not the way to go forward because, you know, eventually people will get bored of just seeing mm-hmm. the same kind of quality every single day, day in, day out. You right. know? Okay. It might have a phase, yeah, you might get a few more followers for a particular, uh, uh, you know, span of time, but eventually mm-hmm. if people realize that you're not putting in the hours daily, it will show. You know? Absolutely. Because I think the camera or the mic can never lie, no matter so how hard you try. Huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's yeah, Unless, like, yeah. like I said, you know, it, it works for certain spaces. Like, you know, you stand up comedian, uh-huh, sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What you say is all that matters. It does not matter how good your camera is. If you have a joke to crack, if it is meant to make me laugh, it will make me laugh. It does Absolutely. not matter whether you shot it on a 5D or you shot it on a, you know, Samsung yeah. phone. It does not matter. So, but yeah, if you're putting out something like music, which is supposed to be a listening experience, I think mm. it is your responsibility to make sure it sounds good, yeah. not just looks good, you know. Absolutely. And I think in today's day and age, there's no excuse because everyone has good computers and you know devices to record. So Absolutely. Yeah. I would urge everyone putting out digital content. The guys, please, whether it is, there's just a little bit of extra effort to just you know. Like just put a mic mm. in front of you, or just make sure that there's silence around you. But you know, right. put stuff that at least uh, enhances the viewers' listening experience. You know, completely, completely. Not not just stuff that is put out there because you know you're just going there to have a chat. Yeah, do that. Like you know, you mm. do your Zoom sessions or whatever people are doing these days. Right. But you know, don't put that out as part of your work as an artist. Hmm. You know, and and yeah, and like I said, uh, I think everyone has the power of the internet in their hands, which mm-hmm. is also, in the other sense, good. That if you really have cool stuff to say and this cool stuff that you do, there's no one and nothing that can stop you. I think you are your own producer. You are your own marketer. Yeah. You know, you can you can literally create the identity you always wanted to without having any limitations. And you know, thanks to all the platforms we have these days, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp and all of that, they all have the business end very easy to access, covered right there. You know. Right. right. So I think if you were, you know, basically a person who's been to College level education, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, obviously it is still a specialized line. There are incredible social media experts and PR analysts and all of that at a higher uh-huh. level. But I think for anyone to start out with, if you have basic common sense and you apply your intelligence, you know, you can definitely give yourself that much needed head start, you know, 
right. and without depending on any uh, external person or you know having too much of you know financial constraints you know mm. i think i think that definitely has been a good thing you know because back That's in the true. day unless you had something past breaking or a record label would sign you yeah. you no one no tv channel would play your music no radio station would play your music so now you know that has definitely changed absolutely absolutely and people should embrace it you know and technology is always mm. excited me a lot and obviously you know the latest plugins with the they come online wherever i'm always the first one to check them out and try yeah. to get them and you know all of that that is great but you know like uh, one of the greatest people i've had the privilege of working with the great ranjit barot so on mm. said you know no matter what happens inside this software machine at the mm. end of the day this is all a blank slate it's a canvas right right you know because people also need to realize that while a thousand other people you know have the same uh, gadgets the same machines the same devices exactly they, what they don't have is my imagination so yeah that's what you got to better you know every single day through practice through listening through you know hmm. you know spending time with what to do so there is no substitute for that regardless of how much of internet happens or continues right. to happen absolutely yeah hmm on that note when i what is the best advice you have been given <laughs> i think there's been many many but uh, like i said you know i i have been fortunate to have not one but many mentors over the years right but i think one of the best pieces of advice i've ever received was uh, was from my father which was you know to just live in the moment he said you know mm. just live by the day you know i think uh, he says to see someone who's also followed his passion in his own way you know uh-huh. so coming from a complete engineering background to doing something completely different you know staying with right. nature farming and so he said I, i asked him once i said what gave you the strength to do what you do and you know mm. uh, you know especially living in a big city like delhi where everyone's judging you and you know right. he says i never think more than a day ahead Mm. I think wow. if I mean it's still easy said than done we all feel at it at some level but I think in whatever capacity if we can apply it to some part of our lives right uh, you know right. regardless of whatever happens whether it's this pandemic or this lockdown or tomorrow anything else mm. that uh, you know major calamity we are faced with if you just look at the next 24 hours trust me this they are not that bad <laughs> and right. so true. nothing ahead of that is really in any human being's hands and we Absolutely. should never forget that we are mere mortals and yeah. everything else is part of the great cosmos and some people call it call it the divine plan some people call it god but you know we are mere we are we are basically mere puppets in the cosmos of this universe and we should ne- always remember that, that if you look at the whole earth we are basically as small as a speck of dust you know so right once Actually, just yeah. make the most of this moment and you know hmm. never try and look so far out neither look so far back uh-huh. that you have regrets uh-huh. and so far out that you know you are in a state of constant worry right so wow. yeah i mean that's i mean like i said it's very difficult to achieve but that's what i have been told by some great people that if yeah. you can learn to live in the moment uh, that's the most yeah you know, life will never uh, sort of fail you you know Completely. for as long as you know it's much more important to be alive than to live for very like forever i think i would ever for yeah. believe in that you know a life well lived is far more substantial than a life just you know hmm. when a person Al- just existed yeah. yeah you know and, and yeah i mean it's, it's been a great difficult year we lost some great great souls you know this, apart from two actors in the last great mm. great institutions of acting out yeah. in the industry yeah. there's another dear friend from another band from parikrama as you know it's mm. been a bus yeah. yeah it's been that kind of a year but you know at the end of the day if you look at uh, you know all these great people they've all left their legacy which will live forever and that's what matters right you know while they were around they that's lives and they have left Completely. an imprint which will 
never be erased regardless Absolutely. of it's timeless yeah it, it is going to stay forever in us absolutely yeah so i think people should remember that that you know as long as you are doing that bit for you know not just for yourself but you know people around you i think the rest is pretty much you know a chance of destiny as they say hmm. <laughs> no one has ever been able to define the unknown and i think the less you think about it the more at least you will be with yourself right completely so yeah that that is definitely hmm. something that i would refer to yeah all right banaya so we are almost at the end of the yeah. conversation <laughs> okay so if you could yeah. change anything about the industry mm-hmm. what would it be if i could change anything about the industry uh it would be hard to define as such because like i said you know the see firstly when you talk industry there is there is basically a film industry there's a television industry and right. there's an advertising industry right right these are the three media industries that exist first right so within their confines whatever they are doing they are doing it very professionally they are doing it at a you know i think uh-huh. if you look at the indian film industry today they are at international standards you know there's disney right. there's fox star there is you know they got every possible uh, you know uh, i would say you know technological and studio collaboration that could happen you know with right. the best from hollywood All of and that, the yeah. you know the only thing i would say uh, uh, if i was to look at it mm-hmm. uh, at a microscopic level is that uh, i wish that they were uh, you know a little more uh, i would say connected to each other it's right you know right now it's more like the film industry is one separate division you know advertising is one separate division and mm. television is one separate division but all that is changing now you know i think with the whole boom of netflix and all these digital platforms if you look at the way indian cinema is being made over the last simply just the last 2 years don't go further than that yeah. you know yeah i think it is changing and i think it's going to change drastically more and more and very fast now hmm. because they have realized that you know post art you know i mean we 90s people hmm, hmm. the new kids they are not they are barely going to even go to cinema halls right you know right so it is the quality of content is becoming more and more important now you know so even if you see series on these digital platforms now they are they are cutting edge yeah? they are not yeah they don't look like those series we used to watch i mean yeah, those the era of you know all the vamps is over mm. long time which is a very good thing but yeah if you were to ask me to in a specific way change something i would just say that i wish uh, they would uh, you know give the kind of marketing and publicity they give <clears throat> to their own uh, uh you know like projects as mm. they would you know they would focus more on uh you know being open to uh, you know all forms of art not just art that is specifically catering to a film you know right. because i think they have the power to do that they have the uh, you know they have the money they have the resources yep 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 you know and they are the people who can bring about the change you know? right so true mm. because because uh, you know they are influencing uh, you know societies across the world through what they're promoting right so i just feel yeah i mean you know everything is good you, you need a bit of slapstick you need a bit of you know uh you know the crazy action movies that we see we still want one of that <laughs> absolutely you know, yeah, you also you also need you know like you you definitely need more irfan khan's good history you know more the uh, parallel cinema you know, hmm. you know i think it should it should be a complete experience yeah. because i think if you call yourself an industry you know Uh, i think it is your responsibility to provide people all forms of entertainment right you know right, right. so so that there's something in it for everyone and i think it's going to happen it's just a matter of time hmm. you know because i think that era of just big budget films is over 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. So true. Yeah. Completely. I mean, they will mm. obviously exist at that level because obviously the big stars will always, uh, you know, continue to exist. Yeah, but there will be. It will find some sort of, you know, balance. Yeah, I think the middle yeah. ground is coming very soon because mm. you know, now, if you look at the, uh, you know, any kid who's beyond, uh, you know, who's the 18 to 20, like 25 generation, most of them. Especially from our cities, they are not going to just go ahead and blindly watch every big, you know, yep, yep, uh, Friday gonna... release. Hmm. You know? Because they have cooler stuff. I mean, we all know there's much cooler stuff out there on the internet. Now. Right. <laughs> so, you right. know, I think, I think, and you know, maybe uh, the other side to look at this lockdown is maybe it's going to also, you know, probe uh, film producers and film producer, uh, film, uh, film promoters to realize that. You know, maybe we could just go digital with some films. Right, you know? exactly. I mean, I think Karan Johar just did that with some of one of his recent movies, mm. and it, it's gonna it's gonna happen more and more because, you know, I think it is much healthier also because you know we are all paying these subscriptions, and mm. I think the viewing experience has become very personal not now, not not as social as it used to be. Right. So I think it will also give people the opportunity to, you know, push the boundaries because, you know, I think, you know, to see the way to look at, I, I'm not one of those people, you know, because 90% of my friends and especially who are from Delhi, they have this one constant rant, oh, film music has destroyed everything, Bollywood mm-hmm. has finished independent music. I'm, I beg to differ. Mm-hmm. I beg to differ on the, on the basic thought that if I am, uh, putting, you know, look at it as uh, primarily, hmm. you know, from an eco- economic perspective. If I'm putting like 50 CR or forget 50, I'm putting 10 CR hmm. or something. Hmm. I have a lot of financial liability. Yeah? I have to yeah. make that a blockbuster success. There is money riding on me. I have taken loans from banks. There are people who have invested in my project. Right. right? right. It is my, <laughs> it is my like, uh, you know, professional responsibility to see that through. Right, absolutely. You know? yeah. So their hands are also tied. They are they are dealing with uh, you know a project at that level. You know, their stars involved, their names mm. are involved, their reputation is at stake, their career is at stake. Mm. They have to do the things they do to you know make it count. Right, right. You cannot expect someone who's you know hiring like the the cream of the industry hmm. to do something just because a few art critics don't like it that way. Right. You know, they have to cater to the mass because that is why they're doing it. You know, the whole idea of calling something a commercial project is that, that you are, there are a very major commercial aspects involved. Absolutely. But, you know, absolutely. but having said that, like I said, that should not be the only criteria. Hmm. When, when they consider the project, you know, right. they should devise a system where everyone in the chain has something to do. Absolutely. You know, and and I think it is changing now. Yeah, I think uh, you look at the sheer uh, number of Indian streaming platforms now. You know, it started with obviously the boom of Netflix and Amazon hmm. and all that. Now you have so many. You know, yep. whether it's Z, whether it's Hotstar, whether it's and yeah, they all the have their are, own. Yeah. Yeah, they have their own Indian series. They hmm. uh, have their own content. Hai, jo, uh, exactly. You can uh, consume kar sakte hai. That is uh, not something they are just copying and aping from the West anymore. Hmm. They have their own concepts. They have, uh, like, you know, within the confines of the digital medium, I think they are producing it really well. Some of those background scores, if you ask me, sound as good as any Hollywood background score. Yeah. You know? Uh, and, mm-hmm. and I think it it is going to change, and I think films are also going to be made more and more like that as time goes by. Because you know you cannot fool uh, an audience beyond a point in 2020. You <laughs> yeah. have to realize yeah. that you know yeah. you cannot get away with some crazy sci-fi like you know slow mo effects and yeah you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is not going to buy it. Absolutely, know? yep, that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, you can't just land up with a name and expect a picture to sell. It's not going to happen. And hmm. I think they're also realizing it. So, if you ask me, yeah, I just, if there's one thing I would say that should change, I would just want more of that to happen at a bigger level. That's hmm. what, you know, that, you know, be more open to 
you know stuff uh, that is not just the traditional formula box office stuff. Right. You know, and, and I see that coming. So hopefully, this question shall be answered <laughs> in due course. <laughs> yep. All right, Vinay. So before I let you go, I just want you to possibly, you know, give some tips to our audience. Maybe you know some of who they are into music. They love music. Maybe they want to do it commercially. Maybe you know, like the opportunities are endless. Or maybe they are yeah. just music lovers. So what is that one thing that you would like to just tell all these people? And yeah, just please. Uh, I I don't know uh, <laughs> what level I can say this, but uh, I would just say musicians are not musicians. I think to all creative professionals and lovers of art, you know, hmm. I think uh, there I would say two things. One, we all need to realize that when we look at any artist, you know, big or small, you know, popular or not popular, they're all putting in a a, uh, like a very major part of their lives into doing what they do, so we should respect mm. that, you know. Right. And secondly, I would just say that if there's something you really want to do, you know, there's something that's in your heart, you want to write, you want to paint, you want to dance, you want to sing. There could not be a better time to do that than now to mm. express yourselves. The world is your stage, you know. Just seize the opportunity, make it your own, and. Uh, I would say, yeah, rules are meant to be broken, uh-huh. and yeah, there there is no right or wrong, uh-huh. and I think some the the greatest songs would have never been written if those people uh, were trying to follow someone else, and the same holds for everything creative, you know. Uh, I think the people we follow, uh, we only do so because. They uh, came up with something that was theirs, you know, right. that touched the chord that hadn't been touched before. So, you know, given that obviously a lot of things have already happened and we have decades of great art and cinema and music and everything behind us, there still there always will be uh, room for someone who is. Willing to push the boundaries, who's willing to try something new, who's open to new ideas, who's willing to connect to the world around him, and who has something to say. So, I would say, as long as you have something to say, mm-hmm. you will never fall short of an audience. Perfect. I yeah. think you have just, you know, yeah, <laughs> absolutely beautiful, and you have said it in the right amount of words. And <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. I, I, I think, yeah. But lovely speaking to you, Shruti. Thank you for having me here again. And, uh, Same here. Real yeah. pleasure. And like I said, taking me back to spaces in my life <laughs> that I had myself forgotten. So thanks again for doing that. I am so glad that you know we had this conversation. And yeah, I yeah, look forward to hearing the final. Uh, for uh, sure. Whenever it is out. <laughs> I will share the link with you. And again, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. And thank you for. Inspiring our Thank audience you for and all our listeners. Absolute pleasure, and look forward to connecting with you again soon. Oh yes, I have to get in touch with you to, you know, possibly invite Gehna for one of the episodes now. Done. I look forward <laughs> to that. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Tanaya. All right, Shruti. Take care. Stay you safe. You too. Absolutely. And uh, we hope that the world recovers from this really soon. Yes. Totally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let the world heal, and yeah. Yeah, and Indeed, keep listening yeah. to good music and oh yes, <laughs> just make as many good memories that you can with whoever you have around you. Completely. Yeah. All right. All right, Shruti. Thank take you. care. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe.